Well, hi there. I'm Sandy Allnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube. And today I'm going to show you how to make some leaves for your ladybug using the Honeybee Little Ladies stamp set, which has a whole bunch of ladybugs in it. Isn't it cute? It's going to be really easy to color if you're somebody who is challenged with not loving to color. It has nice heavy lines, nice simple shapes. And I'm going to show you some tips for coloring something like this with watercolor. But first I'm going to do the leaves because this kind of a thing, I pretty much find that if I'm gonna do something scene-wise that I'm not sure of, then sometimes I wanna do that first in case I screw it up and then I don't have to paint the rest or feel like I'm gonna mess it up when I do my scene. So I've got my image stamped onto some arches, cold press watercolor paper. I'm just using one color of green for right now to make a stem for my little ladybug to walk along. And I want to give you a little tip on it. What I should have done, and I didn't do deliberately so I could show you this, is to do any other stems coming off the bottom one while it's still wet. Because you can see when I make stems coming off this top one, that the, the stems, the, the thin one and the wide one, they blend together right away. Because I'm just putting all that color down real quickly and doing it while it's wet. Once it dries, you'll get that hard edge, and it depends on, you know, how worried you are about getting that hard edge to blend in or show up, but I'm going to try to see if I can make that hard edge right where the, the edge of the, the fatter part meets the edge of the thinner one, and there's still just a little line there, but it's okay if it's there. It's not going to kill anybody, but you can add other greens to it. You can make it darker. And sometimes if you wet it like I just did and then go back and work in it again, then the water that you put down will kind of work on whatever's already been there. It'll kind of work to soften it up a little bit. So I'm just going to work on tightening up my edges, make sure that I don't have any areas that are a little bit wet on top of the stuff that was already there. I want it all to be equal wetness because I kind of wanted this whole thing to feel very graphical and just have some really big stem and leaf shapes. So I even have the leaf shapes pointing off the page so it feels like it's a really big branch and a little teeny tiny ladybug. And one of the things that this all came from is when I was a little girl, I used to love catching ladybugs and putting them in a jar. I know that was not a kind thing to do. But I figured now that I'm older and I know better, I can just give leaves to my ladybugs here and paint them with some food so they have plenty to eat. And this would be a really cute birthday card. And I know some grandmas call their little grandkids nicknames like ladybug. So this would be a cute stamp set to use for something like that. So the two greens I'm mixing, the one that I was using at first is sap green and the other one is green appetite, which is a green that granulates and stuff. So I just put a little extra of the other color in there. And then I set it aside. I was trying to be smart and I set it aside so that it would dry and I don't end up painting the red and touching the green and getting a whole bleeding thing going on. So I'm going to work on this next one. Now each one of these ladybugs faces a different direction and this one is facing away from you. So how do you paint a leaf that's going away from you? So I was trying to figure that out as I was working on this. So I started out by making first the stem that's going to go down to the bottom. And then the top of the leaf is going to curve in front of the ladybug. So it's going to go past the ladybug a little bit in this way. And I'm just going to try to get my, my color relatively even. You can decide whether you want the dark on top and the light on the bottom, because I'm going to add the bottom part of the leaf in a few minutes. But you can either have the light on top or you can have it dark on top and then have the light cascading through the leaf, which is what I decided to do. So I'm adding more of that dark, rich color on the part that's facing toward me. And then there's gonna be a part in just a few minutes that's gonna be facing away in the other direction. And that I'm gonna use a really light watered down kind of green for. And if you're the kind of person like I am that has trouble mixing a puddle of paint that's gonna be enough for the entire piece that you're trying to paint, then doing it like I am is sometimes a little easier way to handle watercolor, which is basically painting straight up with the paint itself and not doing a mixed green. So the 
the dark green has now dried and I'm going to paint the other side of the leaf. So you can picture this as kind of curled over and this part is hanging down off the opposite side. So the ladybug has quite a distance to go to get out to the end of that leaf. But you can see having some really watered down paint makes that green a much lighter color. And as I said, you can go the opposite and do dark green underneath and a light green on top and either one will work quite nicely. And then I'm going to add in, I'm going to drop in while it's wet, a little bit of the darker color down toward the bottom. But I don't want to get the same level of darkness that I already have on the part of the stem that's already painted so that they, they maintain their distance from each other. Now this little little ladybug is flying. At least I picture this little ladybug is flying because the legs are all pointed in such a way that it looks like they're they're flying behind the, the little bug. So I'm going to put branches not right under where my little ladybug is flying at. That's going to make them look like he or she. Are, are lady, I think ladybugs can be boys. I think there are male ladybugs because they wouldn't be able to reproduce right <laughs> if there weren't i should probably look things up about ladybugs before i start doing them but this little guy needs to not have something right underneath of him so that it looks like he's flying and so i'm gonna make my stem way down here at the bottom and you can choose to just do stems or you can do stems with leaves on the ends of them just by making them wider a little bit but the cool thing about having it be really close up like this is that you don't really have to worry about the drawing as much because you're just giving the impression of being a really close up branch. And all you have to do is draw the bottom of a leaf and if the top doesn't look quite right, that's not gonna hurt anybody. And I'm just gonna mix my greens a little bit so that they blend together nicely as they're being painted. And then I decided I wanted to have something else coming up here at the top. So I'm going to bring in another branch from the top area. And since that main stem is still wet, I can do that without having that crisscross of that hard line. So again, just remember that if you want to have another branch come off of it, it's helpful to do it while it's still wet. So it blends together really well. And this one, it felt like it needed a little something else. It just was a little bit boring to have it down at the bottom. So I'm going to put a leaf in the background behind this little ladybug. And that way it's going to look like the ladybug's flying in front of something. And at the very end, I'm going to add some motion lines. So stay tuned for that because that's going to make the ladybug look like she's wiggling. And I do have to say, these would be really awesome putting ladybugs onto some of those little, uh, what are those little things from Art Impressions? They make them go bouncy, bouncy. Oh, I'm blank on what they're called. Um, but anyway, one of those would be really good. I'm going to remember what it is. I'm going to put a link in the description. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. Now this one, I put a ladybug into a jar and this is a jar from Lawn Fawn. I love putting little things in little jars. There's no lid on it. Like when I was a little kid and I used to put a lid on the jar with my ladybug and I'd throw some leaves in there to feed her. But this one, she can escape if she wants to. It's perfectly fine. She's got a little bit of lunch in there if she wants to hang out with it. So I just kind of threw a giant stem right there in my, in my jar. And I'm gonna show you how to make that look like it's inside the jar, which is by changing the color as it goes through the glass. Because when it goes through the glass, it's gonna get a little bit lighter. You're gonna get a differentiation, a color shift. And then I'll add a little bit more dark color up above so that it makes that color shift a little more obvious. And there's the leaf for that one. Now each of the ladybugs, you can do some really easy painting by just paint right over top of all those dots. And I'm using transparent pearl orange for my red. It's kind of an orangey red but I like it as a, a red with some character to it. It doesn't look kind of, you know, weird and bloody because it's got that orange feel to it. So that's kind of nice. And I decided to put some red down here at the bottom underneath of my jar because the jar would be sitting on something, whereas the rest of them are just free floating leaves coming along. And so I started with a very light wash, meaning it has more water in it. And then I got more pigment, made a little thicker paint to add more color to it because while it's still wet, I can blend all that in nicely and all of that dark color will 
will kind of move through the pigment that's already there. If it dries, I'm going to start getting hard edges though, so got to be careful of that. And since you would see through a little bit of that glass, I'm going to put some of that color in the bottom of the jar so it looks a little bit see-through and then take some water to spread it out so I get some very light color as well as a little bit of the darker red around the edges. There you go, cute little jar. And while I'm here with the jar, I'm taking a little manganese blue and I'm just gonna make some shapes along the side to make it look like shiny glass. There's no science to whether or not you make something look like glass and where the shadows and the highlights go because every piece of glass is based on what's around it and what's shining on it, where the light's coming from and what's bouncing through it, that sort of thing. So I'm just putting a little bit around the edges to make that feel more glassy. And then for the black portion, I'm using Lunar Black and you can just paint them, you know, like the heavy paint at the bottom of the head. So I left some highlight on the top. You can get that crazy. Or I'll show you on the next one how to do it much more simply. But the black, you can just paint right over top of the red once it's completely dry in order to paint your ladybugs. And then what I'm doing is taking the paint, I'm using a, a brush that's not very wet and I'm pushing the paint into one area so it, it kind of has a dark to light sort of thing. So you can push the paint that way instead of painting it on with a little bit of a, a dark to light shadow to highlight kind of thing. And finish that little guy up. And then finally, I got out my letter dies from Ellen Hudson and I put a little high on each one and pop those letters using some dimensional adhesive. These are power tabs and I just cut them into little slivers so I could put them behind the portions of the letter that I wanted to use. And the HI was just a really nice simple thing. I added a black layer and then put the whole thing onto a red card base to finish off my cards. Really fun and simple and clean cards, but it's a way to feed your ladybugs. So if you're somebody who used to collect ladybugs as a kiddo, that's kind of fun to do, to go back as an adult and feed your ladybugs some leaves. Thank you so much. Click the like button if you enjoyed this. Supplies are on the blog and in the description down below. Bye-bye.